Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the general refrigerator or defrost heater. It's going to be a very easy repair and it's only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new defrost heater. The defrost heater is part of the defrost system. The main reason you be changing it out is if it's failed and the evaporator is freezing up, causing the fresh food section to be warm. In order to change the part, we have to open up the freezer door. Once you have the door open, you want to clean everything out of the basket. And then we're just going to lift the whole assembly off. There's a tab on the front. So we're going to lift up on the front first and then unhook the back. Once you have it free, you can set it aside. Once you have the door off, we're going to push the rails back in so they're out of the way. Then we can take out the upper basket. I'm just going to pull it out and lift up on it and pull it out the rest of the way. Now we can take the ice maker out. We're going to use the quarter inch nut driver to take out the lower screw. And then we're going to use it to loosen up the two upper screws. You don't need to take these all the way out. So you need to loosen them up so you can lift the ice maker off of it. Once you have the screws loose, we're just going to lift up on the ice maker and pull it off the screws. Then we're going to pull the fill tube out of the cup and then unlock the wire harness. All you have to do is press on the locking tabs and pull it out. Once you have it off, you can pull the ice maker out of the freezer. Now we can take out the rails. We're going to pull them all the way out. There's a tab on each side that we have to press to release. Once you have the rails pulled out, we're going to use a flathead screwdriver to press in on the tab. Once you have it pressed in, you can just pull it on the rail. Don't pull it out all the way, we have to do the other side first. Once you have both tabs released, we're going to push the rails back in and we're going to pull the whole assembly out and set it aside as one piece. Now we can take the end caps off. There's one on each side. They're each held in by three screws. We're going to use a quarter inch nut driver to take them out. Once you have the screws out, you can pull it off the sidewall, set it aside. The other side comes off the same way. Now we have to take off the air grill and the temperature sensor holder. There's a little screwdriver symbol. This is where the release tab is right here. Same thing on the temperature sensor holder. We're just going to reach in with a small flathead screwdriver and flex the release tab. Once you have it released, you can pull it on the air grill. And then pull it to the right so the other tab releases. We can pull it off and set it aside. Same thing for the temperature sensor holder. Just reach in and carefully flex it. We can pull it off and turn it over. We can take the air sensor out of it. All we have to do is unclip it. Pull it off all the way out of the holder. Once you have it off, you can just let it hang there. Now we're over on the left hand side. We're going to take off the wiring harness for the ice maker. There's a locking tab on each side. I'm just going to press on it with a small flathead screwdriver while you press in on the wiring harness to release the tab. Once you have the first one done, you can do the one on the other side. Once you have them both released, you can push the wiring harness back into the cavity. Now we can remove the four screws to hold the back panel on. We're going to use the corner shut driver to take them out. Now we can take the back panel out. We're just going to use a small flathead screwdriver to carefully pull the bottom of the panel out. And then drop it down. You want to make sure that the panel comes off the water supply tube for the ice maker. Once you have it free, you can drop it down and pull it out of the freezer. Now we can reach in and unplug the defrost heater. 
There's an electrical connection on each side that you have to unplug. The one on the left is right below the ice maker fill tube. All you have to do is press the two release tabs and pull it out. And we can do the one on the other side. Now we can reach in with the quarter inch nut driver and take out the screws that hold the assembly to the back wall. There's one on each side and they're located right below the wire harness plugs. Once you have the screws out, we have to pull this tape off. We just have to make sure the tape comes off so the panel is free on each side. Now we have to pull the evaporator out. You want to be careful when you're working on the evaporator. You don't want to damage any of the aluminum or the copper lines, but we do have to pull it out so we can get the defrost heater off of it. There is a locking clip on each side that locks it to the back wall. We're going to use a flathead screwdriver to reach in and press on the tab while we carefully pull the evaporator out. Once you have this one done, we can do the one on the other end. Now we can lift up on the evaporator and pull it out of the drain pan. Now that we have the evaporator out, we're going to take the wiring harness ends off of the brackets. Just like the ice maker wiring harness, there's a locking tab on each side. So we're going to have to press on it while we kind of press the wiring harness out. You can do the one on the back side. Once have them released, you can just let the wiring harness go. And we can do the one on the other side. Now that we have the wiring harnesses off, there's a couple of retainer clips on the bottom of the defrost heater. Just going to carefully reach into the evaporator with a needle nose pliers and grab the retainer clip and pull it off. Once you have both clips released, you can lift up on the evaporator. Okay, and slide the defrost heater out. On the left end, you want to make sure you carefully get the heater out from the loop of the evaporator. Once you have it out, we're going to carefully set the evaporator up onto the shelf. Here's the old defrost heater next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. To put the new defrost heater in, we're just going to set it in place. And then we're going to feed the wiring harness on the left-hand side up through the opening. And we're going to grab the wiring harness and pull it all the way to the top. We can do the other end. On this end, all you have to do is make sure the defrost heater goes in between the coils. So we can lift the whole thing up into place. And then put the retaining clips on. We're just going to use the needle nose pliers to grab the clip and carefully stretch it over the evaporator line. Once you have this one in, we can do the one on the other end. Once you have it in, we're just going to carefully lift the evaporator up onto the shelf and set it down. Then we're going to reach up and hook the wiring harnesses into the brackets. All you have to do is grab the wiring harnesses on each end of the defrost heater and come 
from the back side and snap them into the bracket. Let's have this one in, we can do the one on the other end. Now we can carefully lift the evaporator back up into the defrost pan. It's going to lift up on it carefully and make sure no wiring harnesses are behind it. Once you have it in place, we have to put it into the clips on the back wall. So we just have to line those up with the evaporator. Once you have the evaporator lined up with the clip, we're just going to carefully use a flathead screwdriver to push on the clip itself, not on the aluminum line. Just push on a little bit to open it up, push it on the evaporator. Once you have this side in, we can do the other side. And we're going to use the quarter inch nut driver to put the screws in to hold the bracket to the cabinet. Just want to push the brackets in and make sure the tape sticks up here and the screw holes are lined up. Once you have it lined up, you can use the quarter inch nut driver to put the screws in. Now we can hook up the wiring harnesses. These can only go on one way, so all you have to do is line them up, plug it in. Once you have this one in, we can do the one on the other side. Once you have the wire connectors on, we can put the back panel on. To put it in, we're just going to feed it in, top first. Turn it at an angle. As you're lifting it up, you want to make sure that the temperature sensor goes in front of the panel. And then we can lift it up into place. And then kind of let it fall forward a little bit so we can reach inside and put the ice picker fill tube and the wiring harness in. We're just going to reach in behind the panel and guide these in. Once you have it in place, we can use the corner shot driver to put in the screws. To put the temperature sensor holder on, I'm just going to make sure the temperature sensor goes through it, and then we can clip it into the clip. And we're going to put these two tabs through the back wall. Rotate it over and lock it on. To put the air grill in, you just want to press it all the way up against the top of the freezer. Push it back in and lock it in. Now we can put the end caps back on. These both go on the same way. All you have to do is line them up and push them onto the side wall. Then we can use the quarter inch nut driver to put in the screws. Now we can put the rail assembly in. All you have to do is set it into place and push it back in so the locking tabs lock in. Once you have it in place, we can put the ice maker in. To put it in, all you have to do is hook up the wiring harness. All you have to do is plug it in. It can only go one way. And then you want to make sure that the fill tube goes down into the ice maker fill cup. have it in place, you can lift it up and set it onto the mounting screws. 
Once you have it sitting on the screws, we can use the quarter inch nut driver to tighten them down. Once you have the upper ones tightened down, we can put the lower screw in. Now we can put the door back on. To put the door on, we're going to pull the rails out and then we're going to set the door tabs into these notches on the rails. Once you have the rails out, we'll set the door into place. Once you have the door in place, we can put the basket back in. All you have to do is lower it down into position and make sure the back of it goes over the locking tabs. You can set it down. Once you have it in place, close the freezer door. Once you have the door closed, you can plug it back in and make sure it starts to cool. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.